Hey Siri, turn on the recording lights. Ooh, look at this. Hey, welcome to Tips from the Top Floor. My name is Chris Markward. You're listening to the longest running photography podcast on the planet. And um, yeah, why do I need recording lights? Well, if you're listening to this on uh, your podcatcher of choice, then um, you cannot see what some other what some others see that watch the podcast because I'm recording this. Um, the light here is on. Everything's fine. Um, I'm recording this as a video. Uh, so, um, it, yeah, it's it's just something that I uh, I'm doing now. Um, but uh, but things first. Things first. Okay. Let me let me uh, welcome all you back because um, a lot has happened and uh, <clears throat> the, the 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 show hasn't been on for. I don't even know, a month, no more, two months, something like that. Very, very naughty of me to let you hang this long. But uh, yeah, let's go through a few things that have happened since. Um, I've been a guest on Hit the Streets with Valérie Jardin. So if you are a listener of her podcast, you have heard me. Um, we talked about uh, about how we creatives are really feeling the pandemic dip. That's what I'm calling it. And um, and how we're dealing with it. Very good conversation. I was on the Wise Fool pod by Matthew Dolls. Um, interesting talk. I Not just... Interest, oh, interesting sounds so negative. No, an awesome talk. An amazing talk about self-promotion, about marketing, about public relations, about wanting to be a rock star, about the fear of trying new things, about jumping off a cliff and about lifelong learning. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that was interesting and interesting. See, that is a, no, it wasn't interesting. It was awesome. Sorry, Matt. I didn't mean for this to sound. Now now everyone's going to listen. Everyone's going to listen to it, I'm sure. Um, I have also invested time and, and money into um, the future, into new ways to produce things and if you go to my uh, youtube channel actually let's do this right here um i'm on a video browser and um or on a video uh on a, on a video i'm on a video browser hey what the heck am i talking about um i'm on a podcast and i'm on video and if you go to youtube.com slash chris markward which is the official YouTube channel, um, that's the platform I'm using right now, you will see uh, a playlist for the future of photography, which, yes, we're doing as a video now, um, in addition to the audio. No, 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 nothing will change for you. If you are a listener, if you like audio, because you can uh, listen to that in your car, in your, I don't know, while, while doing other things, yes, no change here. But this is a, this is tacked on. This is an addition. Um, curiously, Polar is its own podcast video thing now. Again, regular audio podcast plus video. Happy shooting. The the German photography podcast that I'm part of is um, is a video thing now. The gluten free podcast that I do with my mom, also in German, is a video thing now. I'm working on more. On more uh, videos for pick one photo. So video production. Video production is, yeah, it's it's about time. It's about time to do that. Um, so yeah, that's 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 something in the future, or actually, it's right here. And um, I'm looking into how I could make this very podcast tips on the top floor. How I can make this into a video version without changing the production, or without changing the production frequency. I mean, the production is almost the same. I'm speaking into a microphone. I'm uh, looking at a script. Yes, I am. Was well, a script? It's a bullet list. But <clears throat> I'm looking at that right now w through the magic of mirrors. I'm looking at this right now while looking at you in the camera. Um, yeah, the ma the ultimate goal is to go back to weekly episodes of this because I mean, tips from the top floor is the flagship show. This is the most important podcast that I do. This is yeah, Tips on Top Floor is it. That's the one I started with. That's the one um, that has an amazing community. That's the one where that I started the workshops around and everything. So, yeah, I want to go back to weekly episodes. And I, I do apologize for letting you 
yeah, letting you, what's, what's an English term? Letting you hang? Probably. Um, because, uh, yeah. But I want to do this on video at the same time, at least as often as I can, uh, <clears throat> without this in inhibiting the production. And as you saw in the beginning, hey, video lights, um, good camera, um, upgraded my computer. You didn't see that, but there's a lot more graphics power now which was dearly needed. I'm instead of sitting in front of my 5K iMac from 2015. Um, this is now I'm looking into an iMac Pro. Hey, <clears throat> not, not a new one though, a used one. But yeah, I, right now I do not have that kind of money. <coughs> Excuse me, hay fever, hay fever season. season. Uh, yeah, I've also invest, invested in a new converter to get the, like the HDMI out from my camera into the computer. Which, yeah, once you manage to source one, everyone wants these things around, so they are out of stock. So that was a bit of a tough one. Um, let me see here. Uh, the the webcam that I use so far, or the the uh, the mirrorless camera, the Sony Alpha fifty one hundred that I used for a webcam so far, um, I have switched to. Well, if you're looking at the video, you're looking through the eye of my 5D Mark IV right now, which is probably the most overkill you can have in a webcam. Hey, but it's not really getting a lot of use uh, for any other thing right now uh, because I can't travel. So, yeah. Uh, but let's talk photography. That's what you're here for, right? Um, I want to I shift this slightly to uh, photography education because... Um, that is at the core of this episode and it's at the core of why TFTTF has been so slow lately um, because I mean let's face it we do not live in good news times right now the last few months have been overshadowed to say the least by by the pandemic and I am feeling the effects of the lockdown I mean, we don't even have a lockdown here in Germany. We have some rules about where to wear masks and uh, how many people can gather and this kind of stuff and uh, um, <clears throat> the physical distancing and everything. But it's more of a it's more of a self-imposed lockdown here. And uh, there are several parts to that, and you might be in the same boat right now. So let's talk about it. Um, there's the first of all, the staying at home part, which isn't that hard for me personally, because um, I've been practicing for this for my entire life. Um, because if I don't travel, which right now is the case, uh, but also in the past was often the case, I was more not traveling than I was traveling. But uh, if I'm here, I'm at home a lot, right? This is where I work from. And I've been working from home for probably for the last 20 years. So that doesn't bother me too much personally. But it might bother you, right? Um, <clears throat> but the one thing that did bother me on a very subconscious level was that um, this general weight on my shoulders from not being able to travel and not being able to run my workshops, which in the end uh, could well become an existential threat. There is a fair chance of that happening. It's not happened yet. Um, but yeah, um, and and being aware of that is there it's all it's there all the time and of course that added weight by the virus spiking right now i mean i'm recording this on <clears throat> june the 27th 2020 um so the virus is not gone it's coming back in areas and uh and that plus the added weight of the the like those worldwide uh racial unrests um if you haven't listened to the last episode which was a more of a public service announcement then uh you might want to go back and listen to that. And and the subconscious weight of all that combined um, has has completely killed my creativity for a while. It was good, just gone, poof, gone. And to be creative, I need to be in, in this, like, in a special mode. And it's a mode uh, in which I can play, a mode in which I can be free. A uh, mode in which I can let my mind wander, um, in which I don't get criticized. Uh, I think psychologists call this an open mode, 
I'm not sure if that's an official term, but um, I want to call it that. And with that background radiation of bad stuff going on that I can't really take off my mind easily, and um, with the with the potentially existential threat of not being able to do like an important part of my job, I I just couldn't get into that open mode. It wouldn't open itself up for me, and the universe wasn't letting me be creative. Um, now, when I talk about creativity, I don't necessarily mean just photography. Speaking is hard. Uh, creativity is everywhere. It's in my in, in my case, it's also in my business. Um, if you run your own business, you probably know what I'm talking about. Starting this whole thing 15 years ago um, was a creative act. Uh, creating this business for me was putting together existing pieces puzzle pieces right uh, the the there was the recording side the teaching side <clears throat> uh the internet side and uh, um, and then make them into something new a podcast that's a creative process um kicking off the doing the TF tfttf workshops um which i started in 2006 that was a creative act that's where i put together my 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 like my teaching chops for my previous job with a location which was which I rented new back then in back in Tübingen if you've been there um, you know the old studio um, with the according like coming together with the according planning and the management and the and the curriculum and I was really lucky to have a good mix of skills that that helped me there and then there were also skills that I had to learn which is always difficult but also fun at the same time to learn something new um during the learning process yeah it hurts a bit but then at the end when you get better at it it's like yes it's, i love this and then out of that creative act came the workshops and um and the travel and all the other things and every time i've done something along those lines every time i've created something something new out of existing pieces i've done this while being in this playful kind of open mode at a time where nothing was really weighing me down too much, right? And the results speak for themselves. Now here, <laughs> I find myself in mid-March having to cut short a photo tour. I've talked about this several times and then seeing my entire travel business and my workshop business kind of poof, evaporate. And that pulled me down quite a bit. That weighed me down. And um, that's also one of the reasons why you haven't heard from me in a while because I just wasn't feeling it. Um, I mean, you know, to record the show, I need to be in a bit of an open mode. Every single episode is a creative act. And I can, I can point at several, uh, previous episodes where I, where I like, like pushed through, faked a smile. Of, um, and honestly, I don't look back at these fondly. Every time I did that, these episodes just weren't that good because I was, I wasn't feeling it. And then the audience wasn't feeling it and it's like yeah it's yeah it's not good so i want to be in this open mode when i record an episode but here's another reason you haven't heard from me and that's that i found that open mode again at least in a good uh, to a good extent and uh this time and i think that's my that's my uh recipe for for success in this case is it is coupled with a sense of urgency I have been super busy and uh, been in this creative mode full speed for the last, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks. And uh, it turns out it's, yeah, it's one of those times again where, where quite a few different puzzle pieces uh, have fallen into place. And that coupled with a bit of pressure by, yeah, <laughs> you losing part of your business. And yeah, it's, it's, um, it's been uh, a good ride. It's been a good last four weeks um because again i've learned a lot in a very short time and uh this is about an idea that i've had for i don't know years three four five years um but i never really managed to get around to doing it because um i didn't have to put the work i didn't have to put the work in i couldn't put the work in because i was too busy with traveling with holding workshops and um, in the end, that's basic energy management, right? Uh, just creating something uh, and creating something means spending time with it and pulling, pu uh, getting something new off the ground 
just means a big time commitment. Um, and then in, during that time, you can not do something else. You have to not do something else, um, especially when your plate is already full. And the idea was that uh, getting people to my workshops was like only part of the equation. Um, a tough part, not easy to get people to the workshops, involves a time commitment from the participants. Um, they can't always make that time commitment. It requires a financial commitment for the travel and uh, an hotel and everything around it. So um, I was looking for for uh, a way to get my workshops to the people. And before you go, Chris, I've, I know you've done that before. Uh, yes, I have done that in the past. Um, you might remember the Lightroom video workshop, discoverlightroom.com that I did. Um, but the problem with that is uh, that I see teaching is b to be most successful as a, as a highly interactive activity. If you've ever been on one of my workshops, you know, a lot of hap a lot happens outside the teaching a lot happens like because people on the workshop can stop me anytime and ask questions. And that's actually, actually what I encourage in workshops is like, you interrupt me, ask questions, uh, question what I say, let me know if you don't, didn't understand something so I can try to explain it in a better way. Interactivity is the key ingredient to learning fast. So those pre-recorded video workshops, I mean, they only scratch part of that itch because um, I, you probably looked around. There's this whole slew of pre-recorded tutorials and, and workshops out there um, on YouTube, paid offerings, masterclass, uh, lynda.com, Udemy, and so on. And uh, don't get me wrong, I've learned a lot from videos, but what they lack is that important ingredient. Video lectures are great, but they tend to not be perfect for everyone. And uh, for me, they are often too long, not fast enough, redundant, or they just aren't exactly what I need. And they are linear. And I need to, I mean, that's the difference between listening to a voicemail and reading an email. With an, reading an email, you can go, tuk, 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 and you can go skim across it while listening to something you have to go through it. Da, 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 da. And the same is true with video workshops. They are linear and finding the right one requires a lot of trial and error and, and wading through tons of stuff that is probably not interesting for you. And I can't count the number of times where I was almost shouting at a YouTube video because it was too slow, which is, it's not my speed. And then I said one out of 10 maybe is, is exactly what I need. The two minute rundown on something. And, uh, but yeah, this is a rare occurrence, which is why I really love interactive teaching in front of people face to face. Um, yeah. But of course the pandemic has put an end to my face to face workshops. And I've looked at like platforms to move something of some of that over to a video platform I've looked at jitsi and skype and zoom but oh i hate them so much and it's not just the it's not just the can you hear me and uh tap your microphone and that kind of stuff no it's that's not just it it's it's just they lack so much a, a video a video window with someone else is nice and it's okay but uh, it, it, it doesn't lend itself to teaching that well. Um, so it, I needed something different. And uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> remember I told you sometimes the puzzle pieces need to come together for some creative light bulb to go off? That's exactly what happened when sometime in early May I realized that uh, we're there. It's all there now. It's all available. All I need to do is put the pieces together uh, to get what I need. And uh, this is where the platform comes in. I built it. Um, I call it Photo Sensei. Actually, let me bring it up here. Sensei.photo. That's the address. And um, yeah, what is it? It's an, it's an interactive teaching platform for photography. And uh, yeah, it's here. Here you go. Let me just give you a, a quick look at this. Uh, there's a group of mentors. Um, there's uh, different types of sessions. So uh, there's like 
anything, anything you can think of that I have taught in the past or that other mentors have taught in the past about workflow and editing, about photo genres, about <clears throat> even film photography. Uh, it's all there and uh, yeah, it's your live, it's a live video session that you can book. Um, and I've taught so much stuff over the last 15 years. Uh, so sensei.photo is the platform where you, uh, you can choose your own adventure, your own session. Um, I mean, you, you want to have me look at your photos, give you hints on where and how to improve. Yeah, you got it. Want to learn how to do how, how to get perfect color and exposure. You got it. Um, want to deep dive into film photography. I've co-written the book the film photography handbook there's so much i like to teach um and doing it interactively in this way is is wonderful but okay but of course you're here you're listening or watching this right now because it's tips from the top floor you want to learn something so um <clears throat> this is not just a, a, a promotional episode for uh photo sensei um but yeah let me let me talk about some of the puzzle pieces that make this work um kind of a look under the under the hood um the first part of course is completely non-technical it's the mentors it's the people who make this platform and um i will start with myself because uh, that's how i kick this off i'm a one-man show i'm incredibly flexible uh, especially now that i cannot travel um spending more time here means uh, having more time available um I've kicked this off by myself, but again, I'm currently working on adding more mentors to this. So over time, you will see this grow into a small team of experts, um, each of us with their own set of skills. And uh, right now I'm working with, uh, for example, with a renowned street photographer and host of Hit the Streets uh, podcast, uh, the podcast of Valérie Jardin. She uh, will be on the platform, so you can book her too. Um, she's amazing. I mean really i've uh, been on her podcast i've had her on this podcast so if you heard her she really knows what she's talking about street photography the vision in photography wow so and there will be more photographers in different time zones with different skill sets um even with different language skills i mean i speak german natively i speak english uh, valerie is is french native she lives in the u.s but uh she french is her first language so if you speak french or german we've got you covered um so yeah the people it hinges on the people and uh i'm making sure to get the right mix of people together for this because i i want to put together a group of people a group of mentors that i would like to uh to learn from this is my this is my quality level if i wouldn't be happy to be taught by that person then yeah, it's not going to work out. So anyway, the people. Uh, the second puzzle piece is a technology piece. And uh, this is the online platform, the, 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 the teaching platform. And I've looked around again. I, I hate, I really, I'm not a fan of, no, to say not a fan of is wrong. I hate Skype. Uh, from the deepest bottom of my heart, I don't like it because it messes with the audio settings and the video is jerky and blah. So I've looked around <laughs> and uh, I found an online teaching platform that works really well. And it's called Big Blue Button. It's open source. It does, uh, it does video chat very simply. You don't even need a headset. It does echo, echo cancellation really well. It works in a one-on-one -on -one setting. It works even with bigger classes. Um, it's like if you have a, uh, if you have a camera club um hey there's there's a there's a work there's a remote workshop in it for you um it's super simple to use uh the quality is really good and uh it incorporates teaching stuff like you have a slide area so you can show uh, slides and photos there's a whiteboard so you can like put an arrow on something and point at something and um there's shared documents so you can like a like a google doc like you can type together in something make notes um and uh, did I mention it's simple to use? I mean, we've done tests here with uh, with groups here in Germany. It really worked well. So that is a technology piece. Um, the third is a is an organizational and technology piece, and that's the booking component. Um, 
when you go on the on the website and you choose a session with me or Valerie or whoever else we will get on board, um, you'll see our availability. You can choose the right time slot. Um, and this is all handled by this. Well, actually, this is a podcast. I can show you book now so you get to choose a, a book a personal session um choose the mentor time and date and uh let me click here so that opens up uh, a selector this could be several mentors here and the moment it's me and uh you click the mentor and then you get their availability and it pre-selects your time zone so that um comes in handy and then you choose the time slot of that person and let me just fill that out chris at chris uh, so you have a selection of lots of time slots and you now have a selection of different sessions. Um, this is not a final list. I'm still working on that, but you get the idea. There's like editing and feedback and taking control and genres and film photography. And that's all the stuff that you saw earlier. And uh, here's the other. So if it's not on the list, you can give us an indication what you want to talk about. We'll get back to you and discuss what um, what kind of a session this should be. And um, then you click on continue, you get a, a review of, of your selected time slot and a type of session and a mentor you chose. And uh, then you send it off and you have a booking. So that's, that's what we do here. That's uh, Photo Sensei, sensei.photo. Um, and that booking component is really important because it means that I can spend more time on, uh, on the teaching. And on the organizing and i don't have to manage different time slots that is a very well thought out system and that's another key piece to min minimize the uh the maintenance effort and then i think the probably most important piece of that puzzle is you and not just you as the, i mean this wouldn't be anything without you without people who want to learn um but the one piece is that you and with, when I say you, I mean everyone on this planet right now. Uh, you are ready to do this um, because half a year ago, you wouldn't have been ready. Most people wouldn't have been ready to turn on their webcam to do something like this. To talk into their laptop as opposed to a person. Um, doing a remote video session is a skill that many, many people have just learned. I mean, the things have fundamentally changed since March. The world is ready, at least a bigger part of it. And I mean, it doesn't matter. It can be a laptop or a tablet. It works on different uh, platforms uh, or different uh, types of devices. Um, yeah, many of us had to learn to use video chat now. The home office thing, right? Um, so, and if you've ever done a video call with your friends over... I don't know, Facebook Messenger or FaceTime or whatever. Um, yeah, that's what it's like. And this is all packaged on its own website, on sensei.photo. So the website is another piece of the puzzle. And uh, I would love you to have a, a poke around there, sensei.photo. Let me know what you think because um, I, I need your feedback for that. And then that platform is isn't, isn't, isn't an investment in the future. It's not something that will go away after uh, the pandemic is over. No, it is a, it's a, another, uh, what do we say in Germany? Another leg to stand on, um, even if the photo workshops and the photo tours return. Um, and it, it's, it's a good thing because it also provides a very cost-effective way to learn for everyone. I mean, I hear that from people all the time that they would love to attend a workshop or a photo tour, but they don't have the time to do it now. Um, there's no excuse anymore and you can choose your own adventure your own photo workshop session uh, again do you want to improve your editing game hey someone here to teach that to you or get a portfolio review with with uh, tips on where to improve or do you want to go in depth on I don't know my one hour 1000 photos workflow hey it's uh, I, there's the free ebook is still out there but um, it might be much easier for you to learn by having someone explain it to you, show it to you. You share your screen. We look over your shoulder and I will go, hey, th do this uh, in a different way. Do, do it. Do it like that, you know. So there, there's, there's this is this is turbocharged learning. Um, 
or you want to learn more about landscape photography or street photography or architecture photography, travel photography, um, or again, film photography. I've co-written the film photography handbook. There's a lot of knowledge in here that I've already taught on so many workshops from using vintage cameras to, uh, to different film formats, um, to the whole development and uh, processing side, uh, the hybrid workflow. Want to learn to digitize your negatives uh, and how to manage them in the digital world? Yep, there's a session for that. So again, have a look at sensei.photo. Let me know what you think. Um, I'd be happy to welcome you there. And oh, also, if you are a supporter on Patreon, um, any supporter on Patreon, it doesn't matter what uh, tier, what level you support this on, if you're a Patreon supporter, I will soon uh, do a free open classroom session, which is ready for you to join. I'll, I'll just hang out here for a couple of hours and uh, you can join in and say hello and uh, have a look around on the platform just uh, to try this out, get an idea about what this is like. And um, yeah, because Patreon supporters are the greatest fans of this show, um, you get to test it out first. So there you are, sensei.photo.